thank you for coming and thank you for, uh, for all of you uh, making it to today's workshop. Um, so as all of you are aware, uh, we're moving forward from 3.0 to 4.0. Um, and I just want to uh, let you know from the get-go that at least from the instructor side of it, uh, there aren't too many changes to uh, for instructors, right? Which is why you know it's not uh, you know we didn't feel like it was required to have like a really really like you know week long intensive training session in order to incorporate 4.0 from the instructor side. Uh, a lot of the changes uh, are more for for parents and for kids, right? Um, a lot of the changes that are for instructors are mostly like we're introducing upgraded tools and resources that'll hopefully help you, uh, uh, it'll make prepping a little bit more convenient and hopefully that'll make your class quality a little bit better as well, okay? Um, so moving forward then, uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of all the services that Cheonggam's uh, gonna be providing, just so that you're in the know. So if students do happen to come in and they ask you questions about possibly services that we're receiving, right, you're able to at least somewhat guide them. Right. Uh, and then we'll go into the details about you know, the different resources that we're going to be providing uh, instructors specifically. Um, after this, the second half, we're going to go into talking about like one of the biggest changes for 4.0 is students no longer have individual tabs. Right? They have uh, all the tabs are going to be held right at the locations themselves. So which means all the or all the students are sharing their tabs moving forward. Right, so uh, tab management is going to be uh, one of the bigger changes for instructors. Um, nothing to be worried about. We've already run it at four uh, pilot locations uh, for winter term, and it, they didn't. Uh, there weren't any major issues at all. Okay. Uh, so we can move forward uh, to the next slide. Um, so I guess in terms, like from the marketing perspective, from Chengda. Uh, the two biggest things that we're trying to appeal to parents, right, are that we're trying to increase learning value, and we're trying to make it a little bit more convenient. Right? So, from the learning uh, perspective, uh, we've incorporated social learning, right, which we'll go into a little bit more detail, right. And it's not as if we haven't done tried to incorporate social learning before, but hopefully we've created uh, a system that will hopefully be better than what we had before. Um, and also, we're incorporating workbooks. We're bringing back workbooks, so it's going to be a hybrid system. It's not, it's not just all tab anymore. There's going to be a supplementary workbook as well for C1, C2 for this upcoming term. Uh, and then out of class, uh, let's see. So all the kids have to do their iLearning on the tab. That's going to be on the PC moving forward. And uh, we've actually created a vocabulary app. Most kids, when they're studying for the review tests, they have like, they have those printed out lists, or I think for most locations, you print out books for them with vocabulary book, okay? Uh, so hopefully we've created a, an upgraded version, right, of that vocabulary book that they can use to study, right? And this is vocab, uh, this vocab app called Buff, Buff app. Uh, if you want to see what it's about, if you want to kind of play with it, uh, it's a free download on, on Play Store. Uh, we can move it to the front. And again, from the marketing perspective, uh, what we're telling parents and kids are, is that, you know, moving forward, it's not, everything's not just on the tab, it's gonna be a multi-device platform. So you get to study the classroom with the tab, you get to study do your high learning homework on the PC, and we're also providing this uh, mobile app well, mobile apps for children and for parents. Uh, are we familiar with uh, the parent mobile app, Alim? Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, parents have this app that, uh, where they can actually keep tabs on the progress of their kids. Right? So any of the projects that you're uploading through the CSLP recorder, uh, all of that gets shared through the Olim app, so parents can see the kind of projects that your kids are doing. Right? Um, all the grades that you're inputting, they can see and all the iLearning that the kids are doing, the parents can see. Right? So that's what the Oli app is, and they've kind of upgraded that. Um, E-Library app, uh, so basically, um, E-Library app, it's basically an e-book service. Right? So kids, I believe there's like a default free service, and then there's also like a premium service where uh, parents can pay for. Um, but basically, it's just 
uh, a library of a bunch of books on PDF. Some of them a little bit more interactive than others, <coughs> where kids can just go in and they can just read different kinds of English books. Right? Um, teachers will also have a test ID that you can use to see the different kinds of services that the kids get as well. So if you just want to go into iLearning, if you want to see what the e-library looks like, there will be a test ID available for you to go in and see. Uh, okay. uh, so for social learning, I'm just kind of curious, because we've been throwing uh, out the term social learning for, for quite a while. Uh, when you hear social learning, like what, like how do you define it? What comes to mind? Sorry, uh, your name is? James. James? Okay, so uh, James, like social learning, like what usually comes to mind? Uh, in the classroom or how? Uh, both? Sure, both. <laughs> um, I guess basically learning instead of uh, being drilled and instructed <coughs> standing in front of the class, uh, learning as a group. Okay. Oh, okay, so that, 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 that finishing was for both situations? I can't. Yeah, okay. Um, so basically along the same ideas, right, Jane said, it's basically kids just you know, sharing their ideas, other students being able to see those ideas, learn from it, upgrade uh, upon it, and so forth. Right? We do it on YouTube. Right? All of us watch YouTube videos, or we go to TED Ed, we watch videos, we get ideas, or we build on those ideas and so forth. So that's the idea for social learning. Right? We've tried really, really hard to try to do social learning for kids. Right? Um, I'm not sure if anyone has been around long enough, possibly, but uh, is anyone familiar with Cross Cafe? Cross yeah. Cafe? Okay. <laughs> oh, so, I mean, sorry, uh, I, don't, I, I, I remember your face, but I can't remember your name. Oh, uh, Andrew? Andrew, Andrew, okay. Uh, so, Andrew, uh, can you just kind of give a summary of what Cross Cafe was? What did the kids have to do in Cross Cafe? Oh, well, in the past, um, this was often worked in with the projects, is you'd have, like, the kids would make, like, a presentation, and then it would be uploaded to Cross Cafe, and there were sometimes, like, prizes and stuff, or, like, the best presentation. And, um, like, actually, the teachers in the branch I worked at, they would actually, like, um, the best one would actually be, like, watched in, like, a teacher meeting. Okay. Some of the kids got prizes and stuff from it, so some right. of the kids really liked it. Right, right, right. So the idea was, uh, they did projects uh, back in the days as well at Chunga. And what they would do in class is the students in the group, they would do boxes of paper, and the loser would have to go home, go on to this cross cafe, and they'd have to write up like a summary of the project that they did in class. Right? And they, uh, we embedded like a, an incentive system, an award system, where if you go to other teams' projects and you were to comment on them, Right, give feedback, likes, and whatnot, then you would get points, and you can use those points to buy erasers, pencils, and whatnot. Right. What kind of comments do you think the students wrote? Oh, you're, you're smiling. So what kind of comments do you think they, they wrote? Uh, very often they would not be entirely serious. Right. Uh, far from serious. It, most of it uh, ended up being things like, nice project, come to my project, and please give me a like too. You know, and that was pretty much the gist of it. Um, so not exactly the kind of social learning. Ideally, you know, they would have been giving feedback to each other, they were building on each other's ideas, but it wasn't really happening. And I think those are the difficulties that we've always tried to get over when, whenever we tackle social learning, trying to incorporate it. I don't think anyone's really done it successfully for students yet, right? Um, we're still trying, we're still trying. Um, but at least moving forward for 4.0, one of the resources that we've created is like, it's difficult with students, so why don't we do something for our teachers? Right. And so we've created uh, what's called a, a teacher's portal. Right. And basically what teachers are going to do is, like, what's our, uh, I guess, biggest element of prep when we're doing, when we're prepping for a 3.0 class? Media cards. Media cards, right? Um, and so what we want to do is, uh, we wanted, and there's good media cards, and then there's uh, media cards that could be improved. Right? Um, so what we want to do is, okay, well there's great teachers out there, right, who just put in a lot of effort, you know, in, in creating these media cards, right, when they're prepping for their classes. So then, you know, why don't we create something where they can actually share, right? So if I think this instructor has created a great media card, I can use that uh, media card. Right? Hopefully they can improve upon it. Right? So the idea is to share instructor ideas, and hopefully through that, we can uh, develop better class quality. 
Right, so we'll, uh, we'll be showing you uh, a simulation. Well, not a simulation, but we'll actually show you the website that we've created uh, that the pilots have been using. Uh, so all your prep, all the prep that you've been doing in the tabs, you don't need to do it in the tabs anymore. You can do it in the PC. Okay. Uh, let's go to this one. Uh, so for vocabulary app, uh, this isn't relevant for teachers, uh, but you'll see your kids most likely using it. Uh, about that, there's two main parts to it. There's the eye camera, right, and there's uh, the vocabulary app. Uh, the eye camera, what it is is uh, since students have to do their eye learning on the PC, uh, they have to still record for their speaking responses. Right? And so for those students that don't have a webcam at home, they can use their cell phone or parent's cell phone to record using the eye camera and whatever they record there will show up in the PC so they can just upload that. So it's more for like the student's convenience when they're doing their eye learning homework. For the vocabulary app, okay. uh, we actually benchmarked uh, quiz. Has anyone ever used a vocabulary app to learn a language before? Just curious. Oh, oh okay, sure. Uh, I mean, do you remember which app you used? I used Memorize. Memorize, okay. We didn't benchmark Memorize, but we benchmarked Quizlet, uh, which was the top vocabulary app out there. Right? And so this is supposed to uh, replace, I guess, the, the paper handouts or the vocabulary books that they've been carrying around to study, right? And I guess the biggest difference is that it is personalized. Uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail about how that's personalized a little bit later, uh, but just know the biggest, uh, the biggest, I guess, marketing point for the vocabulary app is that it is a personalized vocabulary list. We can go. Um, and for the learning portal, again, just <coughs> something to be aware of, right? Um, so, uh, in the past, there, Chungna provides a lot of resources for parents and students, but the fact is, like, all those resources, it's scattered, right? So a lot of the information were, uh, was on different pages. Uh, they've created a portal page uh, where it's just like a one-stop site for everything. And as you can see, uh, one of the biggest things that the companies have invested a lot of money in is the design, right? So before, it's a little bit, I guess, uh, what's the word? less child-friendly, child right? Uh, they've created a UX design where uh, it's a little bit friendly to the demographic that we're working with. Okay. And, okay. Uh, just slides to give you an idea of uh, some of the things that the students have access to when they're charting their progress. Right? So they have a list of iLearning homeworks that they need to do, how much have they completed, how much more do they need to complete, which assignments they've completed, and so forth. Okay. And again, there will be a test ID that we uh, provide so that if you want to see the, the kinds of assignments that the kids are doing, you can go in here and you can check. Okay. Um, so going into the things that are more relevant for us then. <coughs> oh, sorry. So actually, before we each, uh, even go into that, are, are there any questions just in general about the direction that Chung is going to point out. Okay. Oh, go ahead. I have a question. The four porno classes, are they just going to be for uh I guess EC to Apple Plus? No, so I think there are classes for master's classes as well. Right, right. So since like the tabs are changing, like all the students who are in currently 3.0 programs, uh -huh. they're all going to be using the tabs. They're all going to have the mobile, like the mobile app available for them, and so forth. So, yeah. I have a question. Oh, go ahead. So, if we send our students like media cards, will they be able to access it at home? Uh, no, the media cards won't be saved. Yeah, they won't be saved. Not on theirs. So, um, uh, I can show you later in their uh, in the learning portal website. But all the students, they do have their books. So obviously one of the biggest things or concerns for parents was that you know, since the students don't have their smart textbooks or their individual tabs anymore, they don't have their smart textbooks right, that they can just keep after they leave Chengdao, if they were to leave Chengdao. Right? So all the books that they read or all the classes that they register for, the books are saved in their learning portal. <coughs> it's in there. Any kind of typing or writing that they do in the smart textbooks in the class also gets saved. The only thing that doesn't get saved are the media cards. 
No, go ahead. I have a question about the thought path. So you said it's supposed to be replacing the vocabulary book. Mm -hmm. So in our classroom, we try to have like a no cell phone policy, and we often utilize the vocabulary books during like certain games or writing essays or something. Mm -hmm. So then what should the students be doing instead of using the books? Uh, so I think that's uh, maybe like a, a local policy. Yeah, 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 by branch, by branch, right? Um, the vocabulary lists are still going to be provided in the workbook that I mentioned before as well. Yeah. So uh, and uh, when we surveyed the number of students that don't have a cell phone, right? Uh, it wasn't to the point where we were like, okay, it's not going to be feasible, right? We shouldn't do this off that. But it was at a point where. It's like, okay, we can still do this. The majority of the students would, would still be able to use this application. <coughs> if they don't, we provide uh, the vocabulary list in the workbook, but also they can print out the vocabulary list from their <coughs> learning portals as well. Yeah, so if they want to go paper, they can go paper as well. Okay, so we can move forward. Okay, so just going into the teacher's portal. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Um, so, uh, for most, uh, for all of us, this should be pretty familiar. Uh, there is a new media card type that we've added. Can anyone tell me which one is the new one? YouTube. Sorry. YouTube. All right, we we did talk YouTube for a while, but we, <laughs> we opened it up. Right. So, sorry. Project. 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 Oh, so project one is a new one, uh, which I'll explain. Uh, the one that I actually wanted to focus on was the poll quiz one. So I know we currently have it on SRS. We have like a, a quiz function. Uh, this card is a little bit different, right? In that uh, there is a long-term goal behind it. So when you create your quiz or poll cards, right? Uh, the intent is, I think for most of us, we end up using the same poll quiz card, like if it's a good card, right? Kids are kids react to it well. So. Uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to collect that data, right? So uh, maybe after a few terms and you're using this, uh, the same card, right? We'll have collected a certain amount of responses from the students and we want to be able to create filters so that maybe you want to help, you know, uh, Korean boys tend to respond this way in, uh, for this particular like, question. Uh, Students in Seoul versus students in Busan respond, you know, this way when they're talking about this particular poll like quiz, right? So when you create these cards, there's going to be a button uh, in like on your card that says, "Do you want to send this data or do you want to save this data?" From the responses you get from your students. So if you press that, that that information will be saved, right? So uh, that's for your individual media cards. We're also looking to implement these kind of polls. Right, within the smart textbook in the future, right, and again, collect the data so that teachers have a little bit, uh, they have different ways to approach a question, right, and try to initiate discussion in classes. Okay. Uh, project class, uh, project, uh, I'll actually explain when we, uh, in the, uh, the slides that I cover a little bit later. Next one. So this is an example of a poll quiz card that you're gonna be able to create moving forward. So I guess one of the biggest things is you're going to have uh, a lot more uh, functionalities and uh, editing abilities uh, now that you're prepping your media cards in the PC. Right. So you're going to be able to bold, you're going to be able to, <coughs> capitals, you're going to, be able to underline, uh, you're, going to be add, you're going to be able to add more than one picture on one media card so you can do comparisons. You don't need to put pictures on separate ones. Uh, you can put in three, four pictures, as many pictures as you'd like, on one media card if you'd like. Uh, and you're still able to create decks. Um, yeah. So you have a lot of different functionalities that you can work with. Next one. So uh, here's a sample. Again, I'll be showing you the actual site, but here's a sample of what the teacher's portal currently looks like. Uh, currently looks like. I, I, meant, I emphasize currently because come 4.0, there, there are going to be updates to it. Right? And moving forward, there's constantly going to be updates to it. Right? Um, so there's three different sections. There's a C-learning section, which is the section where you have all your textbooks. 
you're going to be able to go in and do your actual prep. And then there's the second section, which is the media card library. Uh, you'll be able to filter different ways to find different kinds of media cards relevant for particular modules and so forth. If you just click the teacher, you'll be able to see all the media cards that that particular teacher creates. Uh, so again, the idea, the, the intent in doing this is to share ideas right, that teachers have. Um, one way that uh, I feel, since I'm speaking with management here, right, one way that I feel that you can utilize this is that for a lot of new teachers when they're creating media cards, I think they struggle with uh, what actually connects with the students. Right? Uh, I mean, I've heard uh, some teachers, you know, they try to you know, connect with the students by showing videos of like Star Trek, you know, and, teachers, and you know, I've heard teachers go like, oh, you, what, you don't know what Star Trek is? It's like, of course you don't know what Star Trek is, <laughs> right? It's totally different context and so forth. Uh, so I think it is an art, in a way, to create media cards that really connect with Korean students in a particular context. <coughs> um, so for new instructors or developing instructors, when you're doing your one-on-one -on -one meetings or your group meetings, just actually being able to open this up, review the media cards that they've created. You don't need to necessarily open up each individual smart textbook anymore right, to do that. And also, you have an opportunity to show you know, why your media cards uh, are a little bit more effective right, in uh, bringing up discussion right, with the kids. So I feel like that's one way. You can kind of uh, supervise their, the creation of their media cards, and you can also give them good examples right, of what uh, uh, what, what kinds of media cards work and don't work. Um, so again, you, can, you have different filters. If you just want to see the media cards that are created for your particular branch, you can just pick my branch and so forth. Okay. Moving forward. Okay. Uh, the third section is a project sharing uh, section. Okay. Uh, <coughs> are you up here? Oh, you're up here? Okay. Oh, there you are, Andrew Camden, Rainbow Guardian. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, we've been piloting this for, for winter break, <coughs> and if you've been using the CSOP recorder, uh, most likely your projects have been coming up here without you knowing. Right? Uh, again, the intent is share good project ideas. Um, we realize that even at the locations themselves, right, you know, the next door classroom Right, might be doing this amazing project, but me, even though I'm working in the same classroom, right next to, I, next to him or her, I don't know what they're doing. Right? So hopefully this will facilitate, facilitate that. If there is a great project that's happening in the class, right, at your branch, why not share those ideas right, with your other instructors, but also it could also be shared with uh, instructors across the whole country. Uh, you do have the option of, uh, so for projects, uh, all the projects will be uploaded. Uh, for your media cards, you do have the option of keeping it private as well. So you don't need to publicize it. Right? So there'll be an option where you can make it public or private, and I'll show you what that looks like when we go through the site. Okay. Um, so in terms of, uh, I guess, uploading, it's going to be pretty much similar. There are a few uh, differences that you should be aware of. When, when you're uploading the projects. Okay, so if you go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, I guess right now, when you upload your projects, right, there's two main places that it'll go. Right? Uh, all the projects that you do with your students will go to the teacher's portal, the page that I just showed you. Right? But uh, select projects will go to the learning <coughs> Right? And, this, and the students have a separate social learning page where their projects are going to be shown. Right? So the projects are going to be public to other students. Right? So here's the, I, here's the difference. Okay? Uh, students uh, in the group, right, when they share the project, or when, they're going to send the project to you so that you can review it in class. But before they send it to you, uh, they're going to have the option of making it public or keeping it private. Right, so uh, if they make it public, 
right? It'll go to the learning portal if they keep it private. It'll just go to their individual home pages. It won't be made public. Okay. So that's one big difference. And also for uh, when you receive the projects in class from your from your students, right? Uh, you're going to have the option of choosing uh, model projects. So teachers pick. We they call the teachers pick. Right. So you're just gonna, it's just going to be check boxes. He's like, this is, these are the projects that I think are the best. Right? I want to recognize these projects. So when these projects are uploaded, they will be labeled like teacher's pick or model output when they're sent to the learning portal and when they're sent to the teacher's portal as well. So again, we have a separate manual for you know, how to actually do this with screenshots of the application and so forth, but I don't think it's some, it's simple. I feel like there's something that you can do at your individual locations. Um, also, moving forward, uh, uh, because everything's limited to the CSLP recorder, right? Uh, I feel like there are probably limitations in the type of output that we upload. So most of us, um, we're uploading videos, right? Uh, how many of us actually use like Viva Video or <coughs> Wii Video, uh, Kine Kinemaster, right? Those applications to create um, project output with your with your students. Okay, two. Okay, uh, and then I guess the other real common one would be PPTs, PPTs. But then it's I guess the problem. Can you back to the project output slide? <coughs> so I guess what we don't want happening. Right, is, I mean, I think for the most part, if you were to take a look at this, which one do you think is the most common, like, output, like, uh, screen that you would most likely see when you're recording? Number three. Number three, this one right here. Right? Now, I want you to imagine if all projects are like that, you have a whole screen of just three kids standing in the front next to their television showing a PPT. Right? There's going to be no, like, incentive or interest at all, like I don't know, like, all of them look the same, right? So uh, we've asked IT; they're already uh, going through it, uh, being able to upload different kinds of output types, not just video. So instead of uploading the project where they're standing in front of the television, right, present the PPT, you can just upload the PPT itself, right? And we're looking into different apps as well, where we can just get the output and upload as well. Right. Uh, so uh, be aware that in the future, right, you will be able to upload different kinds of uh, output types, not just video. Uh, <coughs> for this, for spring term at least, uh, it's going to be the video. And then you have uh, Snow, the, 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 is anyone familiar with the Snow app? So you have the choice of recording with CSL Recorder or the Snow app. Right. So you, there's like a few more editing functions in there, as far as I know. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, the workbook, I guess uh, before I even start about the workbook, what are some things that in the tab, in this current smart textbook, that in C1 or C2 that you would have liked to be in, like, in like it would be paper based? No taking paper. No taking paper? Okay. Anything else? Like these are sections that I would prefer to do. I think it'd be more helpful for the kids to do on paper as opposed to, you know, on a tab. Reading passages. Reading passages. Okay. So basically, that's what we did. Okay. Uh, reading passages. No taking section. Right. Uh, TRPs. Uh, are we all familiar with TRPs? Topically related phrases that they can use for their I learning homework. Right. So. Those forms you don't need to print out separately anymore from the FTP. Right? They're just all going to be in the, in the workbook. Okay. Uh, one other thing is that that was different from 3.0 and previous Chengdang uh, curriculum is uh, the skills, like individual skills. So the intent behind 3.0 was to introduce a holistic me method of uh, introducing skills to students where they would naturally uh, learn it. Uh, but it's not working out as, as we had planned. So uh, we're going to go back to actually teaching individual skills on a, on a week basis. So in the workbooks, you'll have a, there's a skill lesson for each week that you can, that can, you can use. So I'll show you just a sample of what that'll look like. 
Uh, can you go to the next one? So, example of the skills page that you'll uh, you'll have access to here, workbooks. Okay. Or so reading passages so that you can do skimming, right? You can have your kids actually try to do annotations. Uh, no, the note taking page, uh, page is in there, right? So for the note taking section, uh, it'll have the beginning of the lecture of the conversation, so you have a starter. Yeah. And the TRP page. So all of this will be in the workbook along with the vocabulary list. Um, a note with uh, the workbooks schedule. Um, I know a lot of teachers are anxious about you know getting their workbooks ahead of time to make sure that they can prep in advance and so forth. Um, so all the SIGs, all the implementation guides for the lessons that we uh, that we provide, um, the workbook, how to incorporate the workbook has been uh, put into the, the guides. Um, and you can expect the workbooks at the latest by week 12. Uh, the beginning of week 12, uh, at the latest. The only reason is because week 11 is the Lunar New Year's vacation period. So uh, ideally, all the workbooks will be delivered by the end of week 11, at the latest beginning of week 12. Um, so, vocab learning, I know it looks kind of uh, complicated, right? Uh, it's just showing the flow of how kids actually learn vocabulary at Chengda, right? So, kids, uh, we introduce them, or so we go to the passage with them, they get exposed to the vocabulary words that they will be learning about in the iLearning, right? So, that's the first section there, the C learning section, activate. They go to, uh, they go home, on their PC they're going to do the iLearning homework and they have uh, you know, a few assignments, but the one related to vocabulary is allocation vocabulary. And before, what kids would do is, you know, before they come to take the review test, they would have their piece of paper that they would try to, you know, cram as many words as they can, 30 minutes before the class, right, and then they would do their review test. So that 30 minute cram session, uh, instead of using paper, we provided uh, a flashcard app, right. And uh, this is where I'll talk about how it's personalized. Whatever words that the kids get wrong in the iLearning section, those words get marked, that, that information gets sent to their uh, mobile app. Right? So if the kids want to just focus on the words that they've gotten wrong, they can just study those words in preparation for the review tests. For long-term retention, any of the words that the kids get wrong in their review tests, that information also gets sent to their mobile app, right? So they'll have, by the end of one term, they'll have a list of all the words that they're still struggling with that they, that can, that they can review on their own. <coughs> so what does this actually look like? So these are screenshots of the application. Uh, again, if you see your kids looking at their, their cell phones, Right? And they have this list with a bunch of like stars here and there, most likely, uh, most likely studying for the uh, vocabulary tests. It's the buff app. Um, so they have two kinds of lists. They have the list that has all the words from the iLearning for that particular lesson. And then the second list, the start list, these are the words that they've got wrong on their iLearning. Okay. And so they can choose to study uh, either list. So there's two options, they can study using flashcard, they can study using like a, a, a test that's built into the app. So just screenshots of those, can you go to the next one? Right. So there's screenshots of the actual test that's available in the application. And we have a new mascot, so they're putting this mascot all over the place. I think this is the 4.0 mascot. Can anyone guess what animal that is? Hamster. It is a hamster, it is a hamster, right? And its name is Kongi, Kongi, Bing. And I think they've created like a, a bunch of other characters as well. So I feel like it's probably going to be somewhere along the lines of, you know, like Kakao Friends. Maybe there's going to be, there's going to be like a line of characters, right, that represent them. I'm not sure yet. Uh, this one. And an example of the flashcard section for the vocabulary. Okay. 
And uh, a sample of what the review tests look like, the, smart, the review tests are just smart textbooks. So if you've done class quizzes in, cl in class, it's the same thing, right? But the tests are different. Um, one thing to note here is, uh, I feel like a lot of students might ask you this. Uh, at Chunda, we teach collocation vocabulary. Right? So we always feel like we should give some kind of context clue with the vocabulary to help them underst understand how it's used. Right? Hopefully they can absorb it better. But when they take the test, we give them the collocation in English right, with the main word mark like highlighted in red. But uh, for the answer choices that are in Korean, we don't give them the collocation. It's just the main Korean word that we want them to <coughs> Any guess as to why? This was intentional. Any guesses as to why it was designed this way? Like if you think from like a student perspective, like they're taking a test, you want to make sure that they get everything right. And let's say, yeah, so why do you think we took away the collocation part in the Korean translation? I'm guessing we have context is too easy sometimes. So like, what, what do you think would happen? They would just see the same word and then get not learn the vocabulary. It, that, that's what was happening. So a lot of kids, so for example, if they, the collocation they had to learn was police investigation, right? and the word that they had to learn was investigation, right? and then they would create translation and it's kyung chai they, they don't, chosa, they don't need to learn investigation if they already know police. Right? And so a lot of kids, they were doing well on review tests without even really learning the vocabulary. Right? So if any of the kids do ask, Right? It is intentional. Um, all the tests, the difficulty level is aligned. Right? So there's no worries of you know, sentences or vocabulary in terror being more difficult than the sentences that appear in, in like the albatross test. Because all the review test uh, questions and sentences, they're derived from the iLearning. They're going to be tested on what they do in iLearning. Okay, so it is going to be aligned in terms of difficulty levels. And, and last section uh, for this particular uh, PPT is uh, content renewal. There aren't a lot of curriculum changes, uh, but we have updated uh, a few of the sections for C2 uh, just to make content a little bit more, uh, I guess. I have a quick question. Okay. Is that uh, the test? The, so at, at our branch, we have the, the paper-based test and different outputs and all that. But is that test part of the workbook? Is that a separate uh, smart textbook? It's, it's a smart. It's a separate smart oh, okay. textbook. Yeah. And also, uh, it's connected yeah. to learning points. <clears throat> that's the. I think that's the biggest difference right now. It, it is connected to learning points. So. There is an incentive for kids to do well on them because they can't level up right, without getting enough learning points to the review tests. And in terms of content, the only program where the content has been upgraded or updated is uh, C2. Right? For the purpose of doing projects, some of the uh, technological topics they've been updated. So as you can see, um, week three, it seems for the most part for uh, all levels. For levels EC4 to Birdie have been updated and week 11, EC4 to Birdie. Okay, so uh, if you do have like previous prep, right, most likely these will have to be re -prepped. Any questions in terms of uh, I guess just the overall 4.0 learning values, yeah. Um, so you mentioned that students can go on their cell phones to look at the vocabulary words, but what if they don't have a cell phone? Right, so they have, the vocabulary list is going to be available in their workbooks. They also have the option of printing out uh, a paper list from their learning course, from their own student home pages. The only difference is that it's not personalized. Good question on the vocabulary test. Yeah. It seems like it's just a lot of picking for the higher level classes. Is there an option to have them actually type the word? Because they suck at typing and make a lot of spelling mistakes. Right, so it's not typing. Everything's just matching. Uh, but is there going to be? I mean, I would like to help them in that way. Because uh, when they're writing, it's <coughs> they tend to make a lot of mistakes. 
Right. Um, so we deli it was intentional that we didn't put typing in there, uh, just because uh, spelling has never been, uh, I guess, a focus, right? Or learning vocabulary at Chungtown. Uh, in terms of the spelling, in the workbook, uh, what we did was we actually basically took the template that certain franchise locations were using. Uh, basically, it's just the vocabulary word and we just re like repeatedly rewrite it. So students will still, I guess, get, uh, get spelling help in that respect. They can just write it, but for the actual test itself, it's more recognition as opposed to actually spelling. Oh, question, thank you. Is there any plan perhaps in the future to have like an internet based like level lot test, like a computerized version of the actual level lot test? Yes, they're working on it. So a tab version uh, for level up tests. As to when they might incorporate it, uh, my guess is most likely probably starting summer. I think it's gonna be difficult for by spring. Uh, since there's a skill section in the C1 classes now, does that mean A3 is gonna be phased out completely? No, no, no. Um, so for those of you that I guess uh, do speak with their BMs about which programs to open up and so forth, so we have technically five modules right now. There's C1, C2, A2, B1, A3. Uh, depending on your branch needs, because uh, A3 was used as kind of like that uh, program that was used for students who didn't level up in A2, B1 the previous, like, like the two terms ago. Right, and they're still stuck, they can't do the same A2B1. Yeah, so I don't think it's gonna be phased out. It's still gonna be the option, uh, like the choice is gonna be the BMs, right, in terms of which programs to open up. Hi. Sorry. No, no worries, no worries. All right, um, moving on. Uh, going into app installation. Is there like a lag? Um, so just note that uh, you will have to download the new Chungnam 4.0 application. Uh, currently it is available on uh, the MERP download section. Right? And just note that the logo is different. Okay? If you happen to mistakenly open up the 3.0 Tutor app in your 4.0 class, right, it's not optimized for it, most likely there will be errors. Okay, which is why I recommend that you delete your 3.0 Tutor app. Okay. Uh, they haven't given me a date yet, IT, uh, but um, at a certain point that uh, when you download the Tutor 4.0 app, uh, a function should be available. So they will update it if you download before this time, but a function will be available where you can actually remove, automatically remove the 3.0 Tutor app. Uh, the, only, the only downside of this is whatever prep, like I've already asked, because I know it's, it would be a concern for instructors, all the prep that you've done in your 3.0 smart textbooks, can that be transferred over to the 4.0 smart textbooks? I'm sorry, you can't. Okay, just technical like limitations. Okay, so um, I think for the most part, all the chart, like the charging, uh, <coughs> storage and chargers, they should have been sent to your locations. You should already have seen like all the student tabs there. Is there a location that hasn't received them yet? Okay, so you should get them by the end of this week, right? Because uh, I think all the locations are expecting by the end of the week. Okay, so for those of you that already received it, right, and those of you that will get it, right, there's a tab storage and charger, right, and obviously the 10.1. The 10 inch tabs. Unfortunately, instructors, we still have the 8 inch, we're, we're still pushing for you know 10 inch. Right? <coughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, let's see. One thing to note, managers, right? Please, uh, please let your instructors know this because this is important. Okay? One of the biggest, uh, I guess, uh, again, another big difference is because students don't have their individual tabs, right? Before, like if they had their individual tabs, they can just go and they can update themselves. But because all the tabs are now located at the branch, right, uh, all the updates happen all at once, right? 
So there was actually an issue during the pilots where they were doing the updates, but they were doing it at the same time like classes were happening. Uh, so, so something happened, and the bandwidth couldn't handle it, and everything froze. Right? So when you're charging your tabs at night, please keep them on. Because all the uh, updates are going to be scheduled for the middle of the night. So no updates are going to happen like during class time or right before class time. Everything's going to happen. <laughs> Okay, so moving forward. Um, another thing is now that they don't have their individual tabs where they're already logged in when they come in, whenever they come to class, they have to log in with their IDs. Now, whenever you give students IDs and passwords, what happens? They forget, they forget them. All right. So uh, basically, the IDs and the, and the password that they use, it's going to be their IDs that they use for their, their own learning portal page and their Korean name. For some reason, whatever, I, I think it's only going to be issued like the first two weeks or so, but if they forget, it's available on your MERP page. Okay. So you can let them know what it is. But again, because they're going to be constantly using it to get into their own individual learning uh, portals, it shouldn't be an issue after a few weeks. Right, and everything else is the same, log into the class, students press class, they hit the AP number, enter the AP number of the class, and you can start the class. So everything after that is the same. <coughs> okay, um, setting up the class, this is just a suggested process. Uh, it's suggested because there's, there's gonna be different scenarios based on your location. It's gonna be based on the number of uh, students you have in each class, and the number of tabs that are, that are going to be distributed. So I think for every 15 students that you have, it's not by class, right? It's a, it's a total student number at your branch. For every 15 students that you have, you get one storage charger, right? And then filled with 15 or 20 tabs or something like that, right? Which means, depending on your location, not every class might have a, a storage and charger. Right? Which means that at your location, you're going to have to come up with a system right, to manage tabs. Right? Make sure that you know, you're, all the right number of tabs are being returned to the storage and charger uh, right, every day. Because right? they're going to have to take it out, bring it to their classroom, set it up, right? and then bring it back afterwards. Okay? Uh, but for, those, for locations that have a storage and charger in the classroom, in every classroom, right, this is a suggested process. Right. Uh, instructors before class starts are going to have to set up the tabs depending on the number of students that are uh, are there, are registered for the class. Okay. And at the end of class, just doing a check to make sure that there aren't any issues with the tabs, make sure the students haven't taken any of the tabs <laughs> accidentally, right, put into their bag. Um, a couple of things to check. Uh, I'll show you what it actually looks like, but uh, there's an ST card in the student tabs. Right? And there have been times when students take out the SD card. Right? So we've uh, implemented preventative measures to make sure that when it does happen, your like, instructors are, uh, can be aware. Okay. Uh, earphones and S pens, right? all, like, each of the tabs come with them, just making sure that all of those are returned uh, before the end of class. Okay. And again, this is going to be something that your locations will have to decide as well. Um, you know, if you have a 4 p.m. class with 15 students, but then your 7 p.m. class with three students, are you going to put away all the tabs at the time, or are you just going to keep them available, like uh, leave them on the desks until the end of the day, right? But then there's break times where students randomly walk into other other uh, teachers' classes, right? And pop, there could be the potential of students taking a tab and so forth, right? So all things to be uh, all things that uh, need to be considered, most likely. Uh, the managers you'll be meeting with the staff with branch managers to come up with some kind of uh, procedure, right, to manage the tabs. But this is a suggested suggested process. Okay. okay. Um, so kids being kids, right, they have these like ten inch like new tabs. What do you think they want to do with them? 
They want to play with everything. They just want to press all the buttons. They want to see you know, what's, what's possible, what's not possible. So what happened during the pilots was they were going to settings. And can you guess some of the things that they changed? Just for the fun of it. Language. Language change, okay, sure. Anything else? Change the coding. Password, they put on locks. Anything else? They would dip the screen, right? Because um, they didn't want to study. It's like, yeah, teacher, my screen's not working. Uh, I think the most, uh, I, mean, I would even have to say, it's pretty ingenious, they would play with the alarm, right? So what they would do is, they would set it to go off in the middle of class on, on another day. You know, so, you know, an innocent kid would, you know, would come in, right? They're just trying to study, and all of a sudden, you know, the tab goes off, right? They're right in the middle of class. They're like, teacher, I didn't do anything, you know? Um, so what we did was, We've blocked all the uh, blocked access to the settings. But if for any reason, right, uh, instructors you need to change Wi-Fi settings or whatever, right, you have uh, when you press enable settings, this pop-up will come up. You just need to enter your MERP ID and password and you'll have access to it. Yes, kids are One. And this was the SD card issue that uh, I was mentioning to you before. Right? So some kids, they like to take it out. But um, preventive measures, there's a screen that pops up saying the SD card right, has been taken out. But also, there's going to be uh, like a, a beeping noise that comes from the tab when it's removed. So you'll know right then and there if they've, if they've tried to remove the SD card. Like it literally will go beep. Right? So, uh, when you hear that, nothing's wrong with the tab, it's just that the kids have tried to sneak the SD card out of it. Okay. Or, ah, okay. Um, in terms of uh, tab maintenance, okay, um, you know, kids, they have these tabs, it's not their own anymore, right? It's the, it's the locations, right? So, you know, again, kids, uh, how many of you actually let your students, you know, take the tabs, possibly even leave the classroom to record projects, you know, so forth, right? So because of that, you know, we don't want to stop anything like that, but at the same time, there is a risk of kids breaking the tabs, right? So when that happens, you know, who's liable for it then, right? So to prevent any kind of issues, right, if there are those kinds of situations where the student does break it, you want to report it right away because you're going to communicate this to the staff, the staff will communicate this to the parents, and the parents, what do you think their initial reaction will be? Not my kid. It's not my kid. What are you talking about? You didn't do it. I heard the story from my kid. <coughs> right. Um, so what you want is you want, you want to report it right away. Right? And if you can't report it right away, minimally write down time so that you can check the CCTV. So if the parents do come in, right, and they're trying to get out of it, right, minimally we can show them, hey, you know, your kid did this, you know. Um, or at least minimally, you know, right then and there, go down to the staff or send the, uh, send the kid down to the staff so that everyone's aware that, yes, this kid broke it. Okay. Um, this is gonna be uh, made available. You don't need to, you can come up with your own format, but a way for you to record any kind of uh, those kinds of incidents. Okay. And uh, as we were doing the pilots, uh, you know, a couple of questions that came up uh, from the instructors, right, that we had answers for, and we feel like you, uh, you might have similar questions, right? So first off, uh, documentation for like new tabs, you know, am I liable for it? No, it's all the branches, right? So you'll be signing any kind of documentation for it, okay? But if a tab does break or malfunctions, if it's uh, if it malfunctions because of natural wear, that's on the branch, right? So already your employees, um, the employees your, uh, that are the staff that are working at your locations, they've already been educated, they've been trained on the whole AS process, right? For natural wear. Okay. If a student breaks it, it's on them. Just make sure that you report it right away, right? And in the unfortunate case that you break it, it'll be on you. Um, tab maintenance. So 
because all the students are sharing the tabs now, right? That means that they're going to be going on the internet. They're going to be downloading pictures that they can put into their PPTs. They're, uh, they're going to be recording videos, do like Vivo, uh, Vivo video, and all those videos get saved on that tab, right? Which means the amount of information, the amount of files are going to accumulate over the course of the term, right? So there is no automatic like delete function after every class, right? Um, so uh, at your locations, most likely you'll have to uh, organize a time when you can actually just uh, format that SD card, right? So that there's enough space for future classes. Um, uh, another thing, right, is Kids, you're gonna have uh, a bunch of different kids on the same tab, you know. They go to the bathroom, they come back, they slide. They lick their fingers, they slide. You know, so uh, the tabs can get grimy. So what you're gonna wanna do, or at least at the locations, is probably provide like wet wipes, right? Or some kind of like, something that uh, you can use uh, to wipe down. You don't need to do it yourselves. Uh, some locations, all they had was when the middle school students came in, they would just pick up a wipe and they would just wipe down before they start class. Right? So, uh, something to think about when you're, uh, when you're deciding the, pr the processes of, I guess, maintaining the tabs at your locations. Uh, tab distrib uh, distribution. Uh, not enough working tabs is, is it, shouldn't be an issue in the beginning. For the first year, we have like a year and a half warranty, and battery life is eight hours. So you shouldn't have uh, too many issues with your with your new tabs. Uh, can you borrow one if you're like, let's say, short? Let's say you have an extra the kid that came in, you need extra ones. You have like a class of 15, but you get two, ex like you know, students from another class. You need two more. Uh, you can get them from other charges, but again, uh, there should be some kind of system, right, at your location where you can kind of keep track of which tabs come, came from which chargers. Uh, the pilot locations, uh, what they did was they numbered their tabs. They put stickers on each of the tabs <coughs> so that they know how many, like, which ones belong to each class and how many belong to each of these classes. Okay. Tabs uh, software. Um, so. Again, for the projects, I think this is more most relevant for projects. Uh, all projects, uh, all project apps are gonna be already installed into the student, uh, student tabs. This is based on a white app that we, uh, that we created. So what we did was we asked, uh, what are the kinds of apps that you're using for your projects from instructors, right? We looked at all those apps and we just made sure that all those apps were appropriate for students. But like, what do you think is like the biggest issue with, I guess, downloading apps from uh, from Play Store, well, from like I guess a parent's perspective. Games. Games, games. Um, it's actually the advertisements. It's never like the app itself, right? So the problem with a lot of free apps is there's a lot of advertisements on them, right? And it just takes one inappropriate advertisement, right, where parents are complaining. So all the apps that we've installed on the student tabs, right, like we've gone through them and we've deemed safe, right? So uh, if you do have an app that you really want to use and you know you want the staff to give you access to you know download that app and let the students download that app, uh, just be just be like sure like sure that that app is safe, right? Otherwise, uh, you you might put yourself at risk of getting a, a parent complaint, right? But all the white apps, uh, uh, all the apps on the whitelist that we've downloaded onto student app, uh, student uh, tabs are safe. Okay. Uh, eight inch, ten inch uh, tab compatibility. Any issues? There weren't any issues during the pilot. Okay. And tab updates, as I mentioned before, just make sure that you keep it on the, uh, at night when you're charging. All the updates will be happening during that time. Question? I actually have a question about. Uh Yeah, so uh, I think one big difference, right, is that currently we have uh, students have LG tabs, Chungdung tabs, Samsung tabs, right, and I think that's contributed to some of the compatibility issues. Now that everything is just 
you know, the Samsung like student tab or the Samsung instructor tab, there should be uh, like little to no compatibility issues. Question? Um, are the tablets charged wirelessly or supported? No, no, it's uh, what's it? It's it's with a wire. Right? Yeah. So I need to charge their tablets before it's already inside the box. Yes, right. Everything's in some <coughs> sort of charger. Yeah. Question? The camera app. There's a CSLP recorder, right? So um, if they want the projects to be uploaded onto the teacher's portal or the learning portal, right, it has to be recorded through the CSLP recorder. Yeah. Oh, question. I think maybe he means like the camera on the tablet. Right, right. So it's like if you were to record something on the tablet itself, right, you wouldn't be able to upload it to the learning portal and the teacher's portal. So I think you might have access to it, I'm not sure. Uh, I think, <clears throat> I'll double check. Uh, I think, you know, there's an occasional issue where like, you know, students, like they're in class and all of a sudden you hear like a click, yeah. right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden like students are finding, hey, that's invasion of my privacy, <laughs> right? Um, so I'm not sure if they made it uh, open or maybe it's available after you give them, you, know, you unblock. Right, access to the tabs. Uh, I'll double check. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is there a new reward system? Do you have the badges? How they can't save it? Uh, are you talking about in the tab itself? Yeah. Uh, we haven't changed anything in terms of that. So whatever badge system that we already have, it should still be available. Again, uh, yeah. That's not. That wasn't. I guess. Uh, a focus for us, right? So if we haven't, yeah, there sh it should be the same. Okay, so, all right. Um, so then any other questions just in general about tab management? No. Oh, go ahead. It's <coughs> not tab management, but um, the students are making PPTs, do they send their emails to register? Sorry, when they're making PPTs? Yeah, like PowerPoints, do they still need their emails to register for it? Um, most likely, yes, right? But um, I think there are other PowerPoint apps out, or like PPT like apps out there that they can use where they don't need to register. Yeah, so they can use those. Question? Practical question. I mean, a student desk is like maybe this big, uh -huh. but then we have 10 inch tabs, and then they have their workbooks. Uh, in the pilot branches, we're like dropping tabs a problem. Uh, in the space. Yeah, no one dropped, uh, so we didn't actually hear anything about you know student dropping tabs or not, there not being enough space. I know one location, they actually um, attached Velcro to the desks and to the tab. So they just need to place it there and it wouldn't, right, it wouldn't fall off. So, but yeah, there weren't any issues in terms of like not having enough space on the desk or anything like that. Okay. All right. So then, what we'll do? Okay. So, uh, do you want to take, let's take a, a quick five-minute break then, right? Uh, the last thirty minutes or so, we'll just walk through the teachers' portal and the different functionalities, and I'll give you a glimpse of what the learning portal looks like. Okay. All right, plan to, I guess, improve teacher quality in the U.S. Is anyone familiar with that? I think uh, he was on TED Ed a few times explaining, you know, how he would try to improve class quality in general in the U.S. Um, he had a similar idea, right? Uh, his idea was to uh, basically, again, share ideas, use the network of teachers that we have in the U.S., right, and share, like, best teaching practices, and hopefully that will improve teaching quality in, in the U.S. Right, uh, so he spent like a million dollars, right, uh, to do this. And what he did was, uh, his idea was to install uh, a GoPro in the top teachers' uh, classrooms all across the U.S. Right, and uh, once they record those classes, share those videos <coughs> with teachers throughout the country. Uh, it didn't do well. It failed actually. Right? What do you think was the issue? Why do you think uh, it failed? I mean, it seems like a great idea, right? Just the concept itself, right? Share like best teaching practices from the best teachers all around uh, all around schools in the U.S. 
with you know, developing teachers. And put a GoPro in those classrooms, share those videos. Right. What do you think was the issue? Too many variables. Too many variables, right? Anything else? Go ahead. No one wants to watch videos. <laughs> right, exactly. So someone actually has to watch those videos, right? Anything else? Different personalities. Different personalities, definitely. So teaching styles, right? So it all times come down to, uh, to variables. Um, I think the one, and I think because everyone's teaching a different curriculum as well, right? But the thing though is at Chungam, uh, we have a uniform curriculum, right? Which is, which is to our advantage. Right. So when we were thinking about like this whole idea, you know, what is it? You know, well, why didn't his idea work? What could we try to, uh, I guess, utilize to our, <coughs> this idea work? And it, we basically came down to the conclusion that it was because of relevancy. Right. A lot of teachers they would want if they were watching the videos. Right. It would be things that they're not particularly teaching. Right. So there's no reason for me to actually watch it. Right. Unless I'm trying to extract like the, the concepts, the teaching concepts behind it. Right. So that's what we did. Uh, teachers are able to share the ideas that they have when they're prepping their classrooms, but we want to make sure that when other teachers can see those ideas, those ideas would be relevant for them as well. Right? So how do we do that? Uh, I'll be showing you the C-Learning section. Uh, all the textbooks that, you're, uh, that you'll be teaching for that particular term will show up here. Right? So uh, open up a V1, Tara, or you guys. Okay, sure. So smart textbooks are there. Uh, you'll see orange and blue, right? Orange, that's the number of media cards that you created. Blue are the number of media cards that you have imported, right, from, from other instructors. So let's just open up a lesson. And it's very, very intuitive, right? So once you do this once, it, you'll be able to do it, right? There, there shouldn't be any issues. So creating a media card, just anywhere. Right, choose a location. You have two options here. Create your own media card or import the card uh, that's already been created. Now, this is where we uh, you know, implemented the whole idea of the whole concept of relevancy, right? All the media cards that have, so media cards are very, very specific, right? So they, uh, they're connected to a particular word that's in a passage on a certain line, right? Um, it's in reference to like uh, maybe like the title right of the reading passage. You just want to give them a background video on it, right? So what we did was all the media cards that you will see if you decide to import a media card are cards that have been created for that particular page. You don't need to filter through media cards that have been created for the whole lesson. Only the media cards that are created for that particular page will show up, right? And hopefully we've kind of Bridge that gap, right? Made it as relevant for you as possible when you're looking at uh, other instructors' media cards. So we'll show you that, but you have the option of creating media cards. So let's create a really quickly. Title. Okay. And there's going to be a plus button on the bottom. This is where you can create your deck with different kinds of media cards. Okay. Uh, let's just do a picture one. It'll be the easiest. Go to download. Download. Sorry. <laughs> Go to, uh, sorry. Go to, I'm sorry. Go to sessions. There we go. The samples. <coughs> if you, can you just add one more image? Yeah. Okay, you add it too. Okay, so the Wi-Fi isn't that great down here, so there's a little bit of lag here. Um, as you can see on the top, you have the option of making it public or private. Okay, and then can you just add a description in? We'll just click. Okay. okay, and we'll create another card. So create a deck, and we'll just add make a text card this time. So notice that for the text, you have the different kinds of functionalities available for you, so you can format it. Okay. Um, let's make this one public, right? Complete it. <coughs> right, and 
he'll be able to uh, send it. So it'll send as is. Uh, there was a question about the YouTube videos. Will it send you to the YouTube site itself, or is it just going to show up in the media card itself? It just shows up in the media card, right? So uh, there should be less concern about inappropriate videos that show up on like the side, you know, the recommended video section of YouTube. Um, I know that these days YouTube, uh, they just have the recommended videos show up on the bottom of the screen now, right? But that can't be helped. We can't block that. Okay. And can we try importing a part? Um, actually, I'm not sure. If, so for the whole import idea, it's actually going to take a few terms, right, of teachers actually teaching it, right, for us to actually create a library. So I don't feel uh, that you're uh, going to be utilizing the import media card like function, right, from other branches so much. It's probably going to be mostly within your branch when you're sharing ideas with each other. Yeah, I, I don't think anyone's created uh, a card for this particular page. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so like I said, it's gonna take a few turns for us to actually create a library of the cards that are available. Okay, and can we go to the video card library? Uh, my branch favor? And <laughs> Um, I'll just show you uh, some of the different kinds of media cards that are available and how, how they look. So let's just show the video one. Okay, so it, show, it should be showing up like that in your classrooms. Okay. Uh, can we do poll? Um, right, so an example of the poll quiz uh, card that you're going to be able to create, you're going to add pictures to your options moving forward. And in the class itself, there's going to be a button that says collect the data, or <coughs> data right, that you can uh, use to, to save it. Okay. Um, notice like the different kinds of uh, different kinds of filters that uh, are available for you. So, right. So if you just want to see Media cards created in your locations, my branch. If there are particular cards that you like, you can favor it and so forth. Okay, and if you just want to see the cards that you've created, you can just click my card. Okay. Obviously, I'm, I'm not popular yet. Uh, if you do want to directly import, can you go to uh, my branch? Most, I don't imagine a lot of teachers importing directly from this page, but if you do see a card that you do like, and that you want to import, you can import it directly uh, into your textbook. Okay. And so uh, a question that I had got yesterday was, does it happen automatically? When you prep on the PC and it saves, it automatically shows up in your tab. You don't need to press like a separate <coughs> update button, unless you have, like, the only time you have to press an update button is if you decide to create a media card like during class, right, or in like the middle class on the PC, so, like you run out of the class, you go to like the PC at your location, you create a card and then you go back, you'd have to leave the classroom, press the update button, and then, and then you go back into the class again. That's the only time. Otherwise, it should automatically uh, go into your classes. Okay. And if we go into project output, And uh, all of these have preview as well. Uh, we don't have as many filters yet, but that's going to be all updated as well. So you will have uh, filters for my branch and so forth moving forward. And as I mentioned before, the, uh, my, the teacher's pick, those will be labeled here. Okay. Can you, uh, can, sorry, can you just go to uh, the library for a second? So one of the downsides that we realized when we were doing this pilot uh, was, can you tell which card is which? What, what, which card is what kind of card? Yeah, so moving forward, starting spring term, uh, it will be shown what kinds of card, what kind of card it is, or what kinds of cards are in that deck. So you will be able to see, like, oh, this one is a video card, this one is a, a text card, or this one is a picture card, and so forth. 
Does anyone have any questions about the possibilities or uh, what things are available or not available on Teachers Portal or in what will be available moving forward? Yeah. Are you able to filter by classes and pages? On this, you're not, so again, the intent behind this page wasn't to, for importing purposes. Uh, ideally, that would happen as you're prepping your, your class and you go into import, see what's available. Right, so on this page, you won't be able to filter by page, but you are able to filter by module and lesson. Yeah. If you are importing directly from that page, does it show up in a certain part of the structure? It shows right on the page that it's relevant for. Yeah. Can you manage like the videos on the page? So if you upload something in your own life, can you do it? All right. So you would just need to. So I think. Can you go to my part? <coughs> Can you open it up? Right, so, there we go. Question? Yes, um, for the current Media Cloud Library, what trouble I've seen is that it's not curated. The many of the links are there, will this one be different? So that's, that's the intent behind, uh, I guess, uh, putting a name, right, to all these media cards, right? I, I think the direction that we're going right now is that you know there there's certain there's good media cards right and I think through uh, our network the good media cards will be identified right and hope the uh, media cards that aren't as helpful right wouldn't show up when we filter for popular right for like uh, for the different modules and different lessons right? any other questions about the teachers portal itself. Yeah, when, when can we actually? Right now. Oh, right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so you just need to log in with your MDMP IDs. Okay, and uh, can we go to the learning portal? So, again, this is what the students are going to be seeing. Uh, test IDs will be made available for you to go in and go through it yourself, but just to kind of give you a glimpse of what's available, right? So, we got the iLearning and if you go to my, my vocab, right? So they have the list available, right, on their learning portals, and if they want to <coughs> print out a list, they can print out a list here, right? If your location doesn't have like a, a, a vocab book. I know that's very, that's unique to certain locations. Are there any locations that don't have a vocabulary book that they've created at the location itself? Right, so that's something that you can do. Um, Parents might complain, it's like, hey, I'm paying for this service, why do I need to use my own paper? So, perhaps maybe at your locations, you might end up printing out these for the kids, to distribute to the kids. But nonetheless, the service is available out there for the kids. Just go um, can, you, can we show them A3? Oh, okay, we're already there. Top people speaking. Presentation. Right, so we've already kind of gone through it. So this is what I was talking about in terms of their eye camera and their buff app. They have the option of recording with their webcam to the PC, or they have the option of recording uh, or uploading a video that they've, that they've recorded on their eye camera. So if you look at it, these are the videos that we've already kind of you know, used to like test it out, and the videos show up. Okay. So again, just an idea of knowing what the kids actually go through. <coughs> And I guess we'll go to uh, e-library. So based on the level of your students, right, they'll have, and they have access to all the books from like, you know, lower levels to higher levels. But obviously if you're teaching a higher level, uh, they're not gonna be, you know, reading the books that we're showing right now. There are classics that are available, and those are in PDF format. And with the test ID, you'll be able to see them. And I think that gives you an opportunity to also kind of look at what kind of books are available as well in the classics. Uh, the only thing, the only reason why, so I, I tried very hard, like our team tried very hard to get teachers access to this as well, but because of licensing issues, right, we couldn't do it. Um, just, you know, the possibility that a teacher might use this material to teach classes outside of Chungdam, or just using it to teach at all, right, would be, uh, a violation of the license, of the contract that we have. So, uh, but nonetheless, you have access to the test ID, you can just check it out. <coughs> okay. 
Uh, you, can, you can just open it, see like what, what the kids actually can do. So, uh, as I was mentioning before, they have different kinds of functions, right, uh, that are available depending on the difficulty level of the book. Uh, this one's very interactive. There's a listening section, there's a game, I guess there's games and so forth. There's speaking. So. This is the first time I've seen this one. Right, okay. Richard, you can follow along. Go ahead and say it. I love my family. I love my family. Okay, so oh, yeah. that's enough. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, another service that's available for your, for your students. And let's see later. Right. So all the textbooks that they've uh, purchased. Okay, we'll have access to social learning. We can't open it up yet. It's going to be ready by spring term. And so you can check it out then. It's basically a, a teacher's portal for students, right, with the projects. Okay. Uh, are there any questions with uh, the learning portal itself? Again, you'll be able to play with it. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no? No, no, sorry. sorry, sorry. Okay. So for all the other uh, applications that are going to be available to you, there are manuals, right? Uh, those are going to be made available through the portal, right? So uh, as managers, please download it, share this with your instructors. Um, and the video is going to be made available through uh, youtube.com slash training. Okay. So the video will be uh, available through YouTube. We'll share the link as well. Um, and, oh, go ahead. Yeah, could you, is there a way you could send those PowerPoints as well? Oh, right. So we're going to be uploading these onto the portal. So there's a, there's a section where all the franchise managers, right, have access to, to files. So that's the end of the simulation. Uh, just in, before we end the whole session, are there any questions about anything in particular? No? Okay, so, oh, go ahead. Is this connected to any ERP? This is connected to, so if your location where uh, the instructors are making sure like, that students are completing their iLearning, right? Uh, it's still the same. There should be like an iLearning section where you're able to see the progress of your kids, right? So yes, whatever they complete here is also reflected in the MERP. That's why we don't check it No, you don't, yeah, yeah. you don't need to do that. Is this only iLearning? Like iLearning. If, if, if your branch doesn't have iLearning? Uh, then, it, so basically the kids, they would still have access to the e-library, c-learning, right? It's just that the i-learning section, they wouldn't have access to. Okay. Right, but everything else they would have access to. Okay. So, thank you for coming. Uh, it was early, right? uh, but we got through it. We appreciate it. Uh, good luck with 4.0. Right? And if you have any questions, please let us know. Okay? Thank you, everyone.